Welcome, new Alert Site customer. My name is John Lucania, and I'm going to take you through the journey today, helping you interact with our UXM interface, creating new users in the system, creating a monitor to watch over your application 24 by 7, and enter some notifications into the system to help you understand when your application is not meeting your expectation, whether it be down or simply slow. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the dashboard. The dashboard is a quick flyover, 20,000 foot view of all the monitors in the system, be them web applications, web services in our integration with our own SmartBear product, SOAP UI to monitor those REST or SOAP services, or simple checks against web applications, single URLs. The first thing we're gonna take a look at has how to create a new monitor. The way that we do that is click New Monitor. We have the ability to support simple requests against websites, also our integration with SOAP UI. But let's first create a test against a web application. We do that with our tool, DejaClick. DejaClick is our script recorder built into the browser itself. To create a script, we have to use our script recorder. We can get our script recorder at our site, dejaclick.com, that redirects us here. We have two script recorders. We have one for Firefox and one for Chrome. The scripts are portable between the recorders. I've already installed the Firefox recorder, as we could see up here. The buttons are pretty straightforward, similar to an old VCR panel, record, stop, pause, play, etc. I figure, why don't we build a script against this site together? The first thing we want to do is slide out the sidebar. The sidebar helps us understand how the script is being built as we go through the application. So to build a script, we hit record. The script recorder doesn't know where we are, so what we want to do is enter return or type in a new URL. Arriving at the site for the first time, and then we want to interact with the content. But before we do that, we want to validate the content with our keyword tool the magnifying glass. So we click the magnifying glass and we could hover over words or phrases on the page. What we're looking to do is select a certain word or phrase to help us validate the page, make sure the content's accurate. So why don't we choose downloads? Now we're going to turn off the magnifying glass and continue through that application. So why don't we click downloads? Now here we'll validate again. We'll click user guide. Now why don't we stop the transaction by turning off the magnifying glass and hitting stop. Now at this point on the sidebar we could see there are two steps that we could always go back and rename the steps. As we open up the arrows here we could see the navigation to the URL and eventual click. So let's see how the script plays back from the desktop. We click play. What we're trying to do here is make sure the script plays back to our expectation. Occasionally, the script recorder will prompt us with a pop-up box asking us for some guidance. What we want to do is here is make sure the content behind the pop-up box is rendered correctly, which in this case it is. So we're going to advise the script recorder to proceed as is and train the script recorder. Now it then highlights green where it clicked, downloads, and eventually completed the script. This script works perfectly. The second thing we could do is play the script back, test on demand. Test live on our platform to make sure this script behaves as expected on the back end across one of our nodes. We have over 81 nodes throughout the world. So why don't we take a test from Texas right now? So now the script is playing back from the Texas node directly, going step by step. Step one, the first page, dejaclick.com, the page where you initially download the script recorder. And the second step, an alternative place to download different versions of the script recorder, be it Chrome or Firefox. The script works perfectly in the back end. It's ready for uploading. 
So to upload, once you're logged into your account via the monitor icon, you would log in here. You want to upload the monitor by clicking Upload Recording. You give the script a name. Choose the frequency. 80% of our customers will test every 5 or 10 minutes. Choose the plan. In your case, your plan will always be UBM. And then fire off the test. Click OK. Move it on up to the platform. Now we're in the UXM interface we're in before. So let's close the sidebar. The test already has a name. We see we're firing it off every five minutes. Let's adjust that to 10 minutes. And we can submit this test. The next step is to set up notifications to help various stakeholders across the organization know about when an application's down or simply slow based on your definition of success. We do that with our alerting system. So you click alerts, alert recipients, add a new recipient, and then decide on which form of communication you want to use to alert that user. We support everything listed here. The more common ones are email via HTML format, text messaging, or telephone calls. Once you set up that notifier, you may want to adjust the rules associated with that notifier. For example, click Edit Recipient, Availability Alerts. Some of the various people in the organization that have access to this tool or are on the notification list may not be part of the working group responsible for fixing the problem, and they just want to be aware of an application that has considerable duration. For example, an application that's down for 30 minutes. The way to do that is to adjust alert after this number of errors to a higher number. These are not minutes. These are testing segments. So if you're testing every five minutes, two would be 10 minutes. This allows the initial group of recipients the opportunity to fix the error or problem in the application before alerting a larger group of individuals. And of course, if you raise that number higher, it would be a longer duration before this particular user was alerted to that application being down. So now that we've created a monitor, we've created some notifications, we need to give some consideration to service level agreements. And how do we monitor those service level agreements over time? So what we do is we go to SLAs, SLA Summary. We want to add a new SLA. So we click New SLA. Let's go find that example monitor we built from before. Test script. Now we have to decide on the objectives for our SLA agreement. Our availability goal. How often do we want your application to be up and available over a given amount of time? 99.5%. What is our performance goal? How fast should this application respond over a given amount of time? Let's say 20 seconds. Now that we've created our SLA objectives, we next need to think about our operating periods or one-time exclusions. Everybody has the opportunity to have a maintenance window. So we support ongoing maintenance windows, even if they're 10 minute maintenance windows every Sunday morning, or one-time maintenance windows, an event that you know of ahead of time. So all you do is click Edit Operating Periods and define what those operating periods are. In this case, we've been pretty aggressive. We're going to commit to 24 by 7. We've now created our SLA. Well, how do you report on that SLA? Well, that's easy. Let's create a report. In the performance reporting engine, there are different types of reports available to you. But let's focus on the SLA report. SLA summary report. Then scroll down the bar and choose the monitor we want to focus on. Well, there, there it is, test script. The locations we want to 
pull the data from as part of our SLA report. In this case, we've only committed, say, to an internal stakeholder that this application has to be available and perform to our expectations from the US. So we're going to leave off Germany. And last, what is the time frame we're pulling this information from? Let's pull this for today, given that this test just started. And let's create that test. Now the test just ran, so there's only one result. Well, let's see how we did. Let's view that report. In the reporting engine, we also have the ability to schedule reports, pull it into Excel, email it to someone, or just look at it. So when it comes to SLA reports, we're going to share with that end user what they've committed to and what actually happened. For example, we committed to 100% availability. In this example here, we've committed to 99.50% availability, we're 100% compliant, and our response time should be less than 20 seconds. We clearly beat that from this group of nodes. Now we've created our monitor, there may be some additional changes we want to make. One is to change the default nodes. These nodes have been pre-selected for you earlier in the trial. To override the defaults, all we have to do is edit the monitor. There are two ways to edit the monitor. If you're on this page, of course, click Edit Monitor. But if you want to change to a different monitor, go to the drop-down and click the little pencil next to the monitor name. In this case, let's stick with the test script and click the pencil. Next step is to click Manage Locations and hit the globe. This is where we have the opportunity to test from any one of our 81 locations throughout the world. Typically, you'll rotate through these locations one at a time. Generally, most customers will choose anywhere between 6 and 12 nodes. To add a node, all we have to do is select it in the active column. So for example, why don't we add some additional nodes? We'll add Belgium. And let's add Fremont, California. And let's now submit them to the system. Our monitor has now taken on the additional nodes that we've selected. And we'll start testing from them in a few minutes. One more thing. Let's add some additional users into the system so your peers also have access to the same dashboard reporting interface and the ability even to create their own monitors. And we do that with the Manage section of our interface here on the left sidebar. All you have to do is click Add User. We support different roles and permissions for the new users, including co-admin, the ability to create additional users like themselves, read only, and report only. Once you've done that, click Submit and off you go.